Hello guys, this is Wilfred with Darkest Lords in Zone 22. Today we're going to be going over some uh, weapon guides for you. There's a lot of people out there right now struggling to understand how weapons compare and are used for officers. So I've built up a little bit of a collection here. And I just want to go over a couple things with you. So, as everybody's aware, you have several different categories for weapons. You have your uh, legendary weapons, which are gold. You have your rare weapons, uh, which are purple. You have your uncommon weapons, which are blue. And then your common weapons, which are green. Um, so, four different tiers as far as rarity goes. Green, you can level to 25. Blue, you can level to 50. Purple, you can level to 75. And for Legendary, you can level it to 100. So there's a lot of different XP levels out there. Um, what's good, what's bad. It really comes down to one thing. Stats. Your stats have to match what you are trying to do. Okay, for example... I have this purple weapon down here, a nice PPSH. Uh, this guy here, um, tank defense, garrison defense, total troop defense. And to me, those are a little bit all over the place. Um, you know, you can use it for maybe, maybe tank garrison. If you're doing a full on tank garrison, uh, <clears throat> that's going to be very hard, uh, you know, and very specific for that. I personally wouldn't want to waste time leveling up this type of weapon if you're only going to use it for one specific reason. Uh, tank garrison is all this is good for. So this, to me, goes for parts. Uh, we'll end up decomposing that or putting this into another PPSH for stars. So the idea is not to get the rarest weapons. You don't want necessarily all gold weapons. Um, you know, there's some gold weapons out there that aren't going to do you much good at all. This flamethrower, for example, tank health, garrison health, tank destroyer attack, garrison attack. You know, maybe a garrison weapon, but there's better options out there, especially that are less hard to get. Um, so there's a few guns out there that I personally really like. Um, blue guns are going to be your troop specific guns. These guns are meant for Infantry, tanks, anti-tanks, you know, it says right down here what they're capable of doing. So, for example, the M1891, that is your infantry gun. Uh, when troops consist of only infantry, attack increases by 20%. So, if you watched my last video, we went over officer pairing, you know, make sure you have infantry with infantry officers. Now plays into guns you're going to want to pair this gun with an infantry officer because you're going to be able to get that extra boost when it's all infantry. Okay, now these stats, infantry health, infantry defense, that makes this a perfect weapon. Perfect weapons, the stats match what the weapon is. And that is key, that is number one. Doesn't matter if it's a green weapon or a gold weapon. If your stats don't match, you are doing yourself a tremendous disservice and really reducing your overall ability to fight. So I've collected a, a, quite an arrangement of weapons here. I'm actually going to open some packs while we're in this video so that way I can kind of show you kind of how I sort through the weapons and how I use them properly. So I always open in boxes of 10. I just feel it's a better chance of getting gold weapons. I'll save up my keys until I have 10, and then I'll go ahead and open them as a group. So we're going to go ahead and pop this guy open here, see what we can uncover. So not too much as far as purple, or uh, excuse me, as far as legendary goes, but I did get two purples, four blues, and four greens. So we're going to open these greens up first and just take a look. Siege attack on an on a tank destroyer weapon. So that one's gonna be parts. Tank destroyer weapon, you're going to want tank destroyer boosts. Okay, here's, a, here's actually a perfect green weapon here. You have your infantry rifle, your ranger rifle, with infantry attack. 
If I was a free-to-play player, um, this would be something I would look at starring and leveling. You star and you level these perfect weapons because they are going to be very easy to star and level. Green weapons will save your life if you're a free-to-play player. If you've been purchasing and you've been putting money into the game, you might want to start at blue, you know, at the uncommon weapons. So we're going to keep going through these. Ranger with, tack, with uh, tank attack. This particular weapon is going to go for parts. You could put this into that infantry weapon and level up this ranger infantry weapon a little bit more if that's what you wanted to do. Now here's another one, uh, tank with tank destroyer stats. That one's going to go for parts or, you know, um, blueprints. Okay, so keep going through the list. Tank destroyer stat, infant, in, infantry stat. That one's trash. Here we have a gathering rifle. Now this has troop load on it. So this actually isn't a bad weapon to have. This is not a bad unit um, to equip on a gathering rifle because that is going to be something that you can use to increase your loaded capacity when you're harvesting resources. Now you can get this with troop load and you can get it with troop gathering speed. I actually have one of those in my list which I'll show you later. A um, couple other ones here that I would just use for parts. And then we also have some purples now. Um, M1887, two out of three stats match, that'll be trash. And MP40, uh, two out of three stats match. Now the MP40 is meant only for base attacks. You can see down here that after winning an attack on an enemy base, decreases enemy base defense by an extra 100. Um, this particular weapon, you're going to want just siege stats. You know, it's a siege weapon. Use it for siege. All right. Now, going into a couple other things here, we're going to go back to the weapon lists. So as I said before, you know, you want the stats to match whatever you're trying to do with your weapon. So I'm um, just going to go through a couple more examples of that for you. Uh, here's that particular weapon I had mentioned, gathering speed and load capacity. Uh, the Sten MK2, you know, it's really good for, you know, those gathering officers. Um, now, moving forward, I want to show you something here. My Natalio rifle is just a blue weapon. It's not purple, it's not, you know, legendary. Uh, but this does 20% attack when maxed out on stars, and 20% attack with a max stat. Uh, level 50 is top for blue weapons, so this you can't level up anymore. But I have 40% extra attack and 15% extra defense. If I were going against somebody with a legendary Springfield, for example, like this one, you know... That doesn't have any stats for tanks. So they have 15% attack, 15% defense. I've already trumped that by an additional 25% uh, on attack. Just using a blue weapon that's easy to level, easy to star. These purple, or excuse me, these legendary ones, once you start dumping stars and XP into them, you're only going to get one of those two things back. So when you decide to decompose a weapon or combine a weapon with another, that's two different paths. You're either decomposing and you're getting the XP back, or you're combining it with another spring field to get those stars up on a specific spring field. But you'll lose the XP that you already put into that weapon. So only do one of the two. With legendary weapons, when you have three out of four that match, that is when I decide to star and level. But I'll only do it on one legendary weapon. And that is because they introduced recasts. Now, you can go into these weapons and recast them to try to get four out of four matching stats. Right now, I have three out of four matching stats on the Springfield. It's an infantry rifle. So my infantry team does very, very well with it. 
if I get four out of four stats, it'll be a perfect weapon. You won't have to worry about a thing. Recasts are very important. Three out of four matching stats is the same as a purple weapon. You know, getting three matching purple stats and the weapon's ability, that is as good as you can get for purple. So three out of four for legendary only makes sense to level and star that one. As long as you have recasts. Because you don't want to end up putting all of this work and this time into a spring field. And then all of a sudden you pull, you know, a box of 10 keys and end up with a perfect spring field for infantry. Then what are you going to do with this one? So I use the recasts there. And then I will not, will not level and star the same weapon. For example, another spring field. Three out of four stats work for infantry. We're not going to touch this one. We're just going to keep on plugging away at one legendary weapon. So that way we can hit our recasts on this guy, try to get four out of four stats. Now I'm not going to decompose this other Springfield with three out of four stats for infantry. Because on a recast, if I end up with four out of four tank stats, I'm going to switch this over to Grace and I am going to bring up my legendary Springfield here and use that for infantry, level and star that, and then use my recasts on that. So it's very important. When you get three out of four matching stats, you save that weapon. You put it aside. If you're already working on a legendary weapon, put this one aside just in case your recasts don't go the way you want them to. Now, that being said, you know, we have these green weapons, we don't really know what to do with them. We have these blue weapons that we don't really know what to do with. Um, this is going beyond just the free-to-play players. Um, once you're done with all your blues, you want to work up into the purples. So, for example, Tank Commander Natalia has level 50 has our level 50 uh, submachine gun. Now she's capped out. There's no more ability to raise that. Um, she would need a purple weapon in order to become stronger than what she is now. So I don't want to keep making blue weapons. You know, I don't want to necessarily make a blue weapon for Grace and max it all out and go all crazy with it. Because if I find a purple weapon, it's immediately going on Natalia Natalia's gun shifts down to grace. So it's very important. Don't waste all of your XP. Don't waste all of your stars putting them into all these different guns. Um, eventually, you're going to run into a point where you're going to have to decide with these green and purple weapons, are you going to save them, put them on the shelf for a, a later day, or are you going to break them down in one way or another? As you move up out of greens and into blues you're going to have to decompose those weapons, get the XP back out of them, put them into a new weapon. So that's why it's okay with greens, you know, star those, level those, as long as they match. Um, you're not losing too much XP on greens. Blues, I would be more careful with. Definitely be more careful with blues and purples because you don't want to put 40 weapons into a blue or a purple when each particular weapon is, you know, a decent amount of XP. Here, I'll break this Panzer Shrek down. So that's seven, that's seven uh, weapon enhancement materials or seven blueprints. And those times 40, that's a lot of XP you can put towards a different weapon, you know, to level it up. So be very mindful with your blues and your purples. So I'm just going to batch decompose these, end up with my blueprints, and I'm going to go ahead and put these into an officer. Um, Diana, Diana has my three tank stats, tank de destroyer attack, tank destroyer defense, and damage reduction. So we're going to go ahead, I know I pulled another, um, another M1887, tank destroyer, tank destroyer infantry, 
Okay, we're going to go ahead and decompose that guy. Um, put that into stars. Cool. So, now, blueprints, you know, definitely coming up with server versus server. Um, right at the end of server versus server, I focused heavily on my gathering weapons. Because we know we're going into two months or so, give or take, where we're not going to do any fighting. We're just going to be gathering. So I dumped heavy into Marjorie's weapon and over into Genie's weapon here. So get those leveled up. Make sure you can gather your resources quickly. Now we're kind of in that second half where we've got Gorgon coming up. You know, you can kind of see that we're getting closer to server versus server. Time to start focusing on these weapons again that are just going to go ahead and do damage to people. So... Um, huge fan of my garrisons. So right now we're rocking an STG on Jessica. Let me show you this bad boy. Tank destroyer health, tank destroyer defense, garrison health, total troop defense. Four out of four of those work for anti-tanks. Jessica specializes in anti-tank garrison. So this weapon is perfect for Jessica. Jessica now can get behind a garrison that's mainly anti-tanks or tank destroyers and just chew up defenses. If you end up with some tanks or you end up with some infantry, they're not totally screwed. They still get the weapon boosts, they get the total troop defense, and they get the garrison health. But you're going to want to be mindful of what troops you're using on garrison because you want to get those two extra boosts. Tank Destroyer Health and Tank Destroyer Defense. They're going to be very important, you know, when you're talking an extra 7% between the two of them. So, that's kind of an easy weapon breakdown. Um, you know, keep working your way up. Don't focus on necessarily getting locked into just, oh, it's gold, it's legendary, it's rare. That doesn't matter. I've seen many times that these blue weapons especially when they're maxed out, just chew up people with poor weapon combinations. So be mindful of that. Also understand that when you click on a battle report, you can see what your enemy is rocking. So go ahead and click on their weapons in the battle report, and it'll tell you what you're fighting against. So keep, keep an eye out for that. If you see a... If you see a commander that doesn't know how to match weapons, and you do, go for him. Because <laughs> that's going to help you out. So, the other thing is being able to pair your weapons with an officer that you know it's going to help with. You know, there's some counterattack damage out there that can be boosted, um, and things like that. But we'll go over that in another video. At a later time, I'm going to make a part two of this. And it's going to focus more on weapon pairing with officers.